guys, welcome to yet another episode of Conversations. Na najua leo leo nimevaa ka nikikwach. Uh, Rafa kukatu ni waulize ni nini. Talking about uh, Ninini, today we are talking about a brand that has recently become very popular in Kenya. And um, what I'm seated on is one of uh, the models in that particular brand that we sourced for our good friends from Tiny Pesa. Yes, today we are talking about Mazda and uh, the good, the bad, the sweet and the sour. And as usual, Conversations is that channel that is going to guarantee you an alluring motor vehicle experience. And as usual, I'll be your host, your Canvasology, serving you your Friday dose of Canvasitamo. Eric Wakabi, Eric with a CK on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Also, we value your feedback, we value your interaction. Uh, conversations on Facebook, Twitter and the gram. Before I start this episode, uh, please, 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 60, according to YouTube, 60% of you guys are still watching without subscribing. So take five seconds to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you're notified every time we upload another alluring episode. So subscribe beyond the home stretch to 100k subs. Uh, we thank you for Mahali Metufikisha Napia. This car uh, comes from uh, the guys who who have developed Tiny Pesa. So mkicheza pale Tiny Pesa, mkumbuke pia wana promote conversations na kuasosia magari mazuri kama haya. Sasa, so subscribe. Also, you can support the channel by sending kutowa ni moyo wala si utajiri what you can to support production of this content on Tiny Pesa. Before we get up close and candid with the Mazda brand and the good and the bad about it and why you should buy yourself a Mazda or not, uh, I want to allude to our previous episode that we did on coolant. Yeah, kuna watu walipiga makelele, but uh, let me just break it down. Uh, coolants ni za three types. Eh? We have organic, inorganic and uh, hybrid. So uh, organic coolant is green inorganic is pink however hybrid coolants as i told you which were the third type of coolants might come with a, in a variety of colors but it's very easy ukipata hata coolant ya indigo ama ya gray so my description sawa sawa it will give you three things it's either organic no organic is mainly green so it will give you it's inorganic or either hybrid sawa sawa tujifunze kusoma wa kenya are we together Aye, now let's get to Mazda. So Mazda has become very popular. It, it, it's a nameplate that has been there even on Kenyan roads. Uh, Tangu Kitambo, they have had a very good, uh, a very good uh, legacy of reliability all the way from the days of the Mazda uh, 323, the, the the B180 pickups. They are called B, B1800 pickups, uh, and they have been they have served Kenyans diligently. But uh, for some time, Mazda was not very popular on Kenyan roads until. Uh, when the good-looking Mazda started coming in at around between 20, around 2010, that's when we we saw the Axelas come into the Kenyan roads, the Atenzas, the Demios, yeah. Uh, although we had Demios uh, earlier on, but they were not as you know as common. Uh, however, these cars, especially from 2014, eh, we have had not even 2014, 2012. Let's 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 keep the year at 2012 when we started seeing Mazda diesel engines on our roads. Yes, uh, I know there has been a big debate and uh, now I want us to tackle model by model of some of the most popular Mazda brands in Kenya. Let's start with the smallest and that is the Mazda Demio. The Mazda Demio has served uh, small families, it has served uh, <laughs> first time car owners diligently and also it has had its fair share of problems like the braking uh, rear axle or rear cross member uh, but that can be solved by reinforcement the reason why it breaks on kenyan roads is because it's very weak and our roads are uneven we abuse cars yeah but it, it was more of a factory defect however the engines were very reliable the gearboxes were very reliable uh, the only problems we had with the earlier demios were maybe failing engine mounts and uh, now the axle but they were not a very big deal but fast forward to 2014 when we saw uh, the 1500cc Mazda Demio uh, diesels coming into the Kenyan market and we have been asked time and again uh, Wokabi between a Mazda Demio 1500cc diesel and 1500cc petrol would the diesel be a good choice and I'll tell you one thing remember we are a third world country trying to solve first world problems so if you're buying a Mazda Demio especially from 2014 all all the way would you buy a diesel engine? Yes, the, the petrol ones are superb. They have an untainted, uh, 
record of reliability both for engine and gearboxes and especially because in this small uh, car super mini category they have still kept the automatic transmission on the 2014 one it makes a, it makes it a car that is thrilling to drive and enjoyable to drive as well however the diesel one it is a car that is it is very fast it is very economical and it's very exciting to drive uh, the same engine on the Mazda CX-3 the, the same one on the Demio diesel however uh, let's talk about maintaining the Mazda Demio diesel. What I would tell you guys is that the Mazda Demio petrol would be an ideal car for the first time car owner. But the diesel one needs somebody who is a, with a little bit more of experience. So far we have not had so many problems associated with the diesel Demio. However, uh, if you are a first time car owner, please consider buying the petrol one because the diesel one might be a bit more complicated. We are talking about uh, the high pressure nozzles and injectors. We are talking about the common rail. We are talking about the turbo. So any, any taint of uh, improper maintenance can uh, drive you into the road of buying a new turbo or even a new engine. Also, you need to be very keen on the oil used on these diesel demios. So between a... Ma uh, Mazda Demio petrol and a Mazda diesel, a Mazda Demio diesel, which one do you go for? I would recommend the Mazda Demio petrol. Let's talk about value for money. Uh, is it too expensive? Because uh, it's trading for over a million right now on uh, or in the Kenyan market space. However, the close alternatives, the Honda Fit and the and also the Toyota Vits are also ranging within the same price. But we have the, the Nissan Note and the Suzuki Swift, uh, trade, uh, you know, retailing for prices lower than that of the Demio. So we will iron out the Note for obvious gearbox reasons and we are left with the Suzuki Swift. So comparing the Suzuki Swift and the Mazda Demio, uh, which one is more value for money? Well, the Demio will guarantee you, you know, at least a thrilling uh, driver experience, a superb fuel economy and even... Uh, it's more stylish compared to the Swift. So is it value for money? If you're looking for an entry level car, then the Demio is an ultimate car that you should consider that will give you both style, economy, looks, and even give you an easier time if it's petrol to maintain. Now, let's go to the second car in Mazda's lineup, one of the most popular hatchbacks and saloons that we are seeing on the Kenyan roads. They started becoming a bit more popular around 2010. And which car are we talking about? We are talking about the Mazda Axela. So the Mazda Axela came into the Kenyan market with a little bit of resistance, but uh, the uptake was very, very, very impressive. So what are we looking at? The petrol version coming with 1500cc petrol or even a 2000cc uh, petrol, uh, earlier models, but as they have continued to, to evolve, we have seen a 2200cc diesel engine come uh, into the Axela. So the Axela has been that perfect replacement for the Toyota Fielder. It was cheaper, it was, uh, until recently, it was cheaper, it was better looking, it would handle better, and it would also drive better. So the Axela was that perfect entrant into the Kenyan market and it took its category by storm. It is still one of the most preferred saloon or hatchback because it does come in two uh, categories, the saloon and the hatchback. However, from 2014, we saw the diesel engine come in. And again, remember that 2200cc uh, diesel engine is the same engine on the Mazda Atenza diesel and the Mazda CX-5. Well, it has not had a very good record in terms of reliability, uh, but we, it is an engine, again, it is not ideal for the first time car owner, but if you have stayed around with cars and you're familiar with how to go about cars and even fuel and servicing, well, you might consider buying a Mazda Axela diesel because it is fast. Uh, it handles very well. It is very economical. You know, one thing about the new generation diesel engines from Mazda, Toyota, Isuzu is that they are very powerful. And in spite of that, they still give you superb fuel economy. And uh, also, diesel is cheaper. So if you're buying a Mazda Axela, I would prefer for the first time car owners and the, for the people who want some peace of mind, get uh, the 1500 cc or the two liter petrol Mazda Axela. There are some sport, uh, there are some sport, sporty versions of the Axela that might come with a few aftermarket, you know, uh, things here and there making them perform better. But the ideal one for the first time car owner would be either the 1500 cc or the two liter petrol. But if you, you know, one thing I'll tell you guys is that we did not say that you should not buy a diesel Mazda. No, I never said that. Uh, 
yes, they are some they have a bad record of reliability. But if you know how to live with that car, and that is why I keep on saying the diesel ones might not be ideal for the first time car owner, yeah, especially if you're a first time car owner who is not experienced with mass with. Um, you know, with cars, like maintenance, like, you know, we all have to go through that phase because we have some first-time car owners who maybe are mechanics or uh, have vast experience with cars. So if you don't have vast experience with cars, whether you're owning your third or your fifth car, the Mazda Axela diesel might not be an ideal choice. So the Axela, yes, it's an alternative to the filter. In fact, a perfect alternative to the filter, a perfect alternative to the Sylphie in the sedan category, and also, it's an ideal car for the first time car owner or even for somebody who is looking into upgrading into a more reliable, more efficient car that will still give you looks, style and performance. The other car on this lineup that has since become very popular in Kenya today is the Mazda Atenza. It has taken the, it has taken the market by storm because it looks nice, it has refined looks, it performs very well, it handles superbly well and also it has managed to acquire that badge of uh, fuel economy we had a review of the mazda atenza and the mazda atenza comes with a choice of two petrol engines the 2000 cc petrol and also the 2500 cc petrol the fuel economy between the two of them well not much but if you want a 2500 cc uh, petrol atenza the best the market where you can source that car in you know, in its best form, coming in with sunroof and other fancy things, is um, Singapore. Yes, uh, you can get, th th they are mostly common in those markets. So let's talk about the Atenza generally. It's a reliable saloon car. It has the looks and has the style. It will give you driving experience. In fact, this car rivals the Nissan Tiana and in the Toyota's lineup, it would actually be placed against the Premio. And if we place this car against the Premio, it wins hands down because it's an exciting car. In fact, the looks are so stylish, Mazda's uh, trademark Kodo design language. Now let's talk about the other, you know, controversial sibling of the Atenza, and that is the Mazda Atenza diesel with the 2200cc engine, the same engine on the CX-5 that has not had a very good record as per, you know, 2012 to around uh, 2015. Now, what are the notorious, you know, symptoms uh, of this engine? Number one is overheating. Uh, and also the weak head gaskets. In fact, if you're driving a Mazda Tenza diesel or a Mazda CX-5 diesel and you happen to come ac across some oil spots or uh, oil residues on your coolant, uh, that is spelling doom. Sawa sawa, because it's a, it's a problem that has been prevalent in, you know, those diesel engines on the Tenza and the CX-5. Uh, however, if you understand that car well, uh, well, it's a car that you can live with because these are some, the symptoms of overheating can be detected very, very early. Uh, but it will take a very keen driver with a very keen technician to discover, you know, that this is about to happen. Well, from 2016, things might get a bit better with the Mazda diesel engines. Uh, but can you live with a diesel Atenza? Yes, it is powerful. It is economical. It, you know, it's, it's, it's thrilling to drive. But in terms of reliability, it might not be, you know, the best out, it does not score a 10 out of 10 uh, score. And uh, it's, it's an unfortunate thing because uh, personally we have seen several with that problem. oil namaji. So if you're a first time car owner and you really want a Mazda Atenza, go for the, go for the petrol one. Now with the price tags of the Atenza, the petrol one being the most preferred one among uh, most consumers, well, prices are going for as much as two million Kenya shillings, yes, uh, you have to pay for that price to get an Atenza, which is the best, the, the, the price you're paying to get a Toyota Premio. So it is no longer the cheaper alternative. It is at par with the Premio. And now the diesel one, well, you can still get them for prices from 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, uh, depending on spec. So it is still, you know, the diesel one is cheaper, but the petrol one is a bit more expensive. Next, I'm going to tackle uh, an interesting one that we reviewed, and that is the Demio on wheels, the Mazda CX-3. Um, I'm not going to talk about the performance aspects of the CX CX-3 because it's a replica of what the Demio has to offer. However, I think the CX-3 is a bit overrated, considering you're paying around $2 million for the for the CX-3. 
are actually between 1.8 and 2 million, the same price you're paying for the Atenza. And the only difference between the CX-3 and the Atenza is, in fact, the Atenza has, has much more to offer. Uh, the CX-3, on the other hand, is just a Demio on wheels. So is it a good buy? I think it's pretty, it's a, it's a nice looking car, it has a little bit of ground clearance, but it does not give you value for money. Now, let's talk about their bigger brother, the Mazda CX-5, which has uh, apparently replaced uh, the Antiwa Harrier. Squeeze to corner Antiwa CX-5. <laughs> it's a favorite to many, but the diesel one, again, has proved to be a bit more, you know, ha it has had its own fair share of issues, its own fair share of uh, reliability problems. But uh, let's get to talk also about, you know, the value for money aspect of the CX-5. The petrol ones, again, available in 2 litre and 2.5 uh, litre configurations with an all-wheel drive uh, variant. Well, the petrol CX-5 prices are just so high because they are selling like hotcakes. Uh, and, uh, you know, in fact, if you have a petrol CX-5 in your showroom, probably somebody is looking for it because most of them are actually diesel. Uh, again, the diesel, the diesel one is not as reliable as the petrol one because it needs a lot of care, a lot of uh, experience to handle because, again, the overheating problem that we have talked about time and again on this channel. So if you're buying a Mazda CX-5, please avoid used diesel Mazda CX-5s as we did on the first videos on the cars that you should not buy. Yeah. So the diesel CX-5, and unless you're buying a 2016, 2017, 2018, well, it might not be the best bet uh, as a car. And that is why it's way cheaper compared to the petrol counterpart. Sawa sawa. Yes, there is a demand and supply manenos. Even in Japan, the petrol ones are more expensive compared to the diesel ones. And now, there are other two models that, we, that I, will, I will not talk about much because we are not yet seeing them commonly in the Kenyan roads, and that is the Mazda CX-9. It is bigger than the CX-5. And also, uh, we also have, as, as from, uh, I think, 2020, Mazda has tried to get a little bit more interesting with the CX-5 and also the CX-50 by making them uh, the CX the CX-50 okay we will not talk you can check it out, check it out online um, they are they are going rear wheel drive on their crossovers and that is like uh, they are trying to create a Nissan Skyline Cross out of a CX-5 because it's rear wheel drive it's more fun to drive you know uh, they are because Mazda again really values the driving thrill and safety as well so in a nutshell should a Mazda be uh, a replacement or an, a good car to buy as a first time owner or even to upgrade to? Well, my answer would be yes, but for the diesel options, they do require a little bit more care. They might not be as reliable as the petrol counterparts uh, and they might not be as easy to maintain as their petrol counterparts. And uh, the other thing, Mazda has awesome safety ratings thanks to their partnership with Ford and the obvious brand, Volvo. Na kuna mse kwa comments alisema, mtuwa Volvo ni mtuwa Volvo. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that in this particular video. So I've been your host. Uh, I hope this has been insightful. Uh, you follow me at a personal level. Eric Okabi, Eric with a CK on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Napia, Bonga na CC Conversations on Facebook, Twitter, and the Graph. So, I'll find out. Enjoy Friday. Sasa. So, so.